good evening everyone welcome to all of you for today's session students i hope all of you are fine uh, just let me know whether you people can hear me well during session you have to reply me over here you have to communicate me with with me over here in the chat box so just let me know whether you people can hear me well tell me please can you hear me all right all right okay so students thank you thank you students f9 financial management uh this subject uh let us talk about it yes f9 financial management financial management this subject it has a bit linkage with your paper f2 the subject which you have studied f2 paper a small linkage is over there majority of the subject you will be studying new things over here so that's why uh, i can say that you have you are going to study something new a new subject related to finances students this subject we can classify it into a few areas for example we have investment appraisal area investment appraisal a bit you have to do nft but here it is in detail you will be studying then we have sources of finance because we are going to study financial management so sources of finance yes that what are the business sources of finances available to a business and uh, what are the factors when we choose any source of finance for our business what are the factors and how to calculate cost of each source of finance so source of finance investment appraisal they are two major section of your paper major they are two major section of your paper now the next is after that is the business valuation business valuation is a, an area where you learn how to how to value a running business for example a business want to purchase a running business or they want to sell a part of the business so how to place value to decide value of a business so business valuation is an important section in it next then is risk management risk management when a business is involved in the international transaction so currency rate currency exchange rates they move up and down so what are the currency risk and how to manage those risk because of the movement of exchange rate a business may suffer loss so how to manage that risk again it is uh, we will be learning over here and the last one is that is working capital management because business cash receivables inventory payables these are the working capitals so how to manage working capital effectively in the best interest of the business we will be learning over here how to manage inventory how to manage receivables and other areas as well students from these topics this investment appraisal yes and this working capital management you may have studied in your f2 a bit of this but again these are very major areas so these are five major portion of your syllabus 
and the sixth one is that is some practical area which is related to financial management environment in which we will be discussing some economy related things and financial institutions and like that so theoretical proportion now students the issue is that f9 paper has it has become challenged been shifted to the cb it has become challenge for the students to pass this paper why the reason is that examiner is testing this this is the your format of exam section a that is uh, 20 compulsory mcqs mcqs 40 marks each 40 marks sorry total 2 marks each and 40 marks three compulsory case studies followed by uh, you know five mcqs 10 mark questions again mcqs with the case studies 30 marks you see 70 marks are for mcqs directly and indirectly so these are the questions which are becoming a hurdle for the student examiner is giving tough time over here to the student and they are unable to of course they are unable to uh, solve and go through uh, this exam so and this 30 marks is long question long question 30 marks the issue is that students keep focusing on these 30 marks only and they don't focus this area enough one thing this is the first reason second reason is that when they are studying for this f9 paper they keep focusing calculations only which is a big reason for their major reason for their failure so calculation if you do only calculation you will be able to solve 45 to 50 mark paper maximum in any case 55 mark if you pick last few four uh, four attempts four attempts of the f9 paper you will come to know you will come across to this fact that in exam you have been given the paper is like that 50 50 ratio mcqs and mdqs even third part it is on the theory discursive not calculation some concept has been tested in the mcq and the remaining is calculation so the reason if you prepare if you are preparing only calculation it means you are going to prepare for failure unfortunately unfortunately it is happening unfortunately now so the students that's why from the day first i'll be focusing the theory we'll be discussing the concepts in detail right now so students what will be doing will be starting with some this introduction of financial management and then we will be shifting towards investment appraisal okay so what will be doing will be starting with what is financial management a small concept we will be discussing management yes and then investment appraisal we will be doing that then of course in the sequence business finance then risk management working capital and add the and the theoretical portion which is which is only theoretical financial management environment so this is our sequence what i'll be doing i will be providing you notes and of course mcqs and mtqs and all practice material i will be following the same you need not to go for you need not to have any kind of book or exam kit in addition to these notes these will be enough for you people now let us proceed further 
this is the formula sheet which will be provided to you in the exam this is the present value table again you will be provided this is the not table this will be provided now financial management and financial objective student financial management what is the meaning student the financial manager remember the management of finance the management of finances of the company what is the purpose the purpose is this is the only purpose to maximize shareholders wealth to maximize students listen please before i proceed wherever you feel like that something you didn't get you were unable to grasp a con concept you were unable to understand a concept do give me a buzz in the chat box only write r means i will understand that okay, you want me to repeat it feel free to ask question okay don't feel shy at all this is online class and yes it has benefit that we can interact without speaking just writing the words but there is a drawback that we cannot read body language okay so we cannot understand in this way that i cannot read your faces facial expression okay which no, in normal of my classes i do read actually now so student financial management that the purpose is to maximize shareholders wealth how to maximize and financial management involves basically three things now financial management involves three things one is financial planning financial control and financial management decision now three things are there planning planning means that we have to plan that how much funds our company will require our business will require how much we need when we need because they are going to invest and because they are going to arrange these funds for the business how much amount need to be invested in the long term assets in the non current assets in the working capital in the form of inventory in the form of receivable how many fund how much fund so they have to plan it so first of all planning so they they make they prepare planning month by month normally that how much funds they need and what will be the source where they will be getting these funds how the arrangements will be made and the second is financial control once you have planned these are the planning okay you have made a planning now actual results comparing that on a regular basis that whether things are moving in line with the actual results or not so comparing the data with the plan how much deviation is there and what they can do to to restrict to the the company to the plan how can they what they can do to correct the company to keep the company on track of the planning so financial control financial control so whether the company's objectives are going to be achieved if not so what action they should take to make sure the company gets back to the track once again so financial control and the third is financial management decisions these decisions are four types of decisions which are part of our syllabus as well investment decision investment appraisals they do they do financing decisions that whether they should whether they should raise fund through equity right issue or loan what will pros and cons of each and dividends how much dividend should be given whether it should be increased decreased or maintained at the same level 
they consider all the relevant factors and then management of risk risk which are being faced by the business so they make decision so these are the three functions of a finance manager role of financial mean meaning of financial management yes three types of tasks are done as i told you so students their purpose objective is to maximize shareholders wealth so let us talk about it so we said that the purpose objective of financial management is to maximize shareholder wealth now when we talk about shareholders wealth so what is the meaning of it shareholders wealth is increased by two ways number 1 give them dividends give them dividends their wealth will be increased when you are paying them dividend their wealth will increase second is capital gain what is capital gain that is basically increase in share price for example for example let us learn it by an example a person who purchased on 1st jan 2019 he purchased a share at a price of 15 rupees he purchased this was the market price of the share now it is 1st jan 2020 the same share has market price now here that is 18 rupees plus the company has paid a dividend of 1.5 rupees per share so you see how much gain he got how much so 1.5 in the form of dividend and how much is gain in the in the share value 18 minus 15 so 3 3 rupees and 1.5 rupees so total gain he got 4.5 rupees so this is the increase in the shareholders wealth shareholders want their wealth to be increased in both ways now you see here from here there comes a ratio of total shareholders return there is a ratio how it is calculated it is dividend during the year plus increase in share price during the year divided by share price at start of year now you need not to memorize this just you can memorize this d plus p1 minus p0 p1 is share price at the end of the year p0 share price at the start of the year so difference is again divided by p0 share price at the start of the year so using this formula i can apply it here dividend is 1.5 Plus eighteen minus fifteen divided by one five. So four point five divided by fifteen, and solve it by the calculator over here. Yes. So you see here four point five divided by fifteen. Yes, it is thirty percent. so what is the total shareholder return that is 30% total shareholder return is that clear student
Is it clear, students? Are you clear about it up till now? All right. All right. Let us proceed further. Now. Next. So students, the same thing has been discussed over here, total shareholder return. Here is an example. Yes, kindly solve it for me. Be quick. Solve it and tell me the answer. Be quick. Please. What is the total shareholder return? Tell me this answer, please. Be quick, everyone. Be quick, please solve and give me the answer. Right. So, so majority of you have done 23.6 percent so i can write over here how to solve it 0.27 dollar plus 2.82 minus 2.50 divided by 2.50 in this way you will call it anyway it is done thank you so let us cheat further Student second measure company's performance is, is a financial target. If another earning per share, earning per share, this is a very important indicator of the company's financial performance. Earning per share is very important indicator. Very important. Actually, what we do, investors, investors, what they do, earning per share means that how much company has earned per share during the year. How much they earned per share? How much are they earned per share? So earning per share is it is what they do they compare with the past year eps this year eps with the past year several year and you know that how you know that how it is calculated earning per share is basically calculated you see here eps is equal to earning attributable to shareholder divided by number so in this way it is calculated number of shares so students so dividend then eps for example a company has of 40 cent so out of 40 cent, company pays dividend and some is retained as retained earning. For example, company said 20 cent, 25 cent pay as dividend and 15 cent per share. 
and this has to be this has to be retained as profit now so students eps is compared from year to year and it is also seen that whether eps is growing from over the year or not or it is same a growth in eps a growth in eps indicates that indicates that the company is a healthy company it is improving its performance okay now so students there are some drawbacks eps is based on the past data past year not about the future and yes it is based on profits earning profit and which can be manipulated profits can be manipulated how by changing depreciation by provisions by accounting it can be manipulated now so here is question graph super made earnings attributable to shareholders of this in 8 and this in 2 to 20x9 company's share capital was 12 million ordinary shares of 1 dollar each in both year calculate eps for both year and growth in relative and absolute what i will do just i will open an excel sheet yes and i solve it there fm now so gross hooper they say that they have earning per share uh, so earnings how much they have they said it was 8250000 okay 8250000 yes and then trip 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 and yes yes now they said that shares how many shares they have the shares are 12 million 12 million same shares both year eps earning per share will be equal to earning divided by number of shares here it is equal to. now so you see here second year as well simply calculate it is this calculation clear to everyone eps is it clear now they said that growth eps growth in two months means absolute means quantity how much increase is there this minus this this is this is to total amount increase from one year to the other. so in relative term eps growth in sorry in relative in percentage terms yes you see here sorry so how to do this is real growth divided by this because growth is on the base multiplied by 100 So in answer will be in percentage. So seven point six three percent is the growth, total growth, percentage growth, so growth divided by initial EPS multiplied by hundred. This is EPS growth in the relative terms. EPS growth in the relative terms. I hope it is clear to you people. now next
let us proceed further yes uh, not clear not clear should i re-explain it shamima should i re-explain it yes i will explain this said this said yes i am happy that you have asked it they said that calculate eps growth in absolute term so this minus this is growth in absolute means amount absolute terms means how much increase in amount difference between simple now relative term means difference increase in the percentage terms what is percentage increase so how we will calculate how we will calculate just see here let me calculate again just see here this minus this okay so this will be the difference divided by this only i am not talking about that i am not talking about profit before tax or after tax whatever is given just focus that this is out of the context right now okay because we are not doing p f7 remember we are trying to understand eps other aspects financial aspects not accounting aspects i repeat once again Once again, this minus this, this is increase divided by what was initial, this multiplied by 100. Sorry, yeah, this uh, formula, yes. Yeah. this minus this divided by this initial multiplied by 100 now here it is 7.63 so now is it clear this this relative term is it clear how we calculated it increase percentage increase Yes, Shamima, is it now? Uh, let us proceed further. So business has other financial targets as well. They want to maintain gearing. Gearing means debt to equity ratio. They want to maintain, they say equal, Trust a certain level they want to maintain that this ratio should not exceed from a certain level. So they can maintain that as well. The ratios they can maintain these targets, profit retention out of EPS or total profits. They keep a small part, they keep a part. They say, for example, we have to retain 50%. 60%, 70% or whatever they want, they can set a target of retention and remaining to distribute as dividend. A target operating profit, for example, they say profit should be net profit margin, operating profit margin, 30%. So whatever they decide, they have, they can decide these financial targets are not primary primary is the shareholders wealth these are secondary these are subsidiary under the umbrella of the main target main target you are managing all these but overall wealth is not increasing 
shareholders will not be happy it is of no use so other financial targets so students the yes problem is that primary target and and secondary target they may be in conflict with each other for example you are increasing dividend you are increasing shareholders wealth but your gearing is increasing too much you want to increase dividend for shareholders so you may not be able to fulfill this profit retention they are in they are one it they might be 180 degree for example the company has earned eps of just focus on this point 80 cent you in the previous year you have paid 40 cent dividend in the previous year dividend this year you want to pay 50 cent dividend dividend so dividend is every second objective is you want to retain 50% of profit if you retain 50% of it it means you cannot pay this to pay 50% of it you cannot pay 50 can you pay you cannot pay prime objective is this i repeat i repeat primary objective is that you want to increase dividend secondary objective is that you want in 50% of the profit retention if you retain 50% of it can you pay this dividend tell me can you pay yes only one person responded other people are not clear tell me please if it is not clear i can re explain it you cannot pay because 50% of it is 40 if let me let me go there leave it come here let us turn it in the previous year dividend paid was 40 last year this year dividend target is this year 50 cent this is the primary objective secondary objective is the other objective is secondary that 50% retention of profit when you retain 50% it means only you can distribute as dividend so this year eps is 80 cents now out of these two one can be achieved only either you can achieve this or this primary objective is catching with the secondary one if you pay 50 out of it remaining is 30 so this will not be achieved if you retain 40 out of it 50% of it you cannot pay this so primary objectives are in clash they are clashing with secondary objectives yes i hope it is clear to you people i hope it is clear to you people is it clear to everyone now yes good so this is what is being said that when you set objective targets either primary or secondary they may not be inconsistent with each other when this happens one can be achieved compromise will be accepted means you have to lose one then businesses have businesses have non financial targets as well non financial objectives as well what is what are those 
the first one is welfare of employees employees welfare that you want to pay them good they want them to uh, have good wages comfortable environment you want to improve their career good pensions yes sir. these these are also objectives sometimes businesses are there to provide a service for example water board or electricity supply company if they are government companies they are not there to earn profit they are there to provide a service sometimes yes yes the fulfillment of responsibility yes they are earning profit but they want their customer to be happy they want their customer to be satisfied they want to have good customer relation so they are they are there to satisfy customer they are there to fulfill customer's requirement so they provide them after sale services they provide them you know that ultimate uh, service experience now responsibility towards suppliers sometime it happens when you are a big customer so you have your bargaining power is strong and you should not use your power unscrupulously you should not use your power against the interest of supplier against the good intentions you know that you know that this should not be now so student timely payment as per agreed that may be the and welfare of society they contribute to the csr has care you know that society they launch training of the people society contribute to the society welfare csr now so students that's uh, the topic. next let us come to investment investment appraisal investment appraisal students this is the very important section very important section investment appraisal from your exam point of view it weighs around 30% of your syllabus yes syllabus so big area so we are going to start it what is the meaning of investment appraisal of investment appraisal company is going to appraise evaluate what whether they should invest in a project or not they should invest in a new factory new building new product new location new product new type of production facilities whether they should invest over because it is a huge amount why it is important because large amount is involved future you are going to spend in future and once you spend that amount it cannot be reversed easily so you have to evaluate that whether these investment will be feasible financially for the business and whether it is as per the objectives of the company or not now so this is why investment appraisal is done so capital budgeting process it has been tested in the past paper for 5 to 6 marks two times so capital budgeting process the companies make capital budgets the first one is original it start with the origination of idea that where we should invest it this idea can come from within the organization manager director they can bring the idea of investment or from the environment business environment weather is changing or for example corona so the mask production 
idea from the unit or medicine so origination of idea second is once ideas are originated they are listed down and now screening is done Screening means whether the business idea that is in line with organization's overall objectives or not. Overall objectives. It fits with that. If it does not as for the business objectives, we say, okay, leave it. And we apply some simple investment of other techniques. Detailed valuation through detailed investment of other techniques and considering other impact, ethical, legal issues, and ethical issues. Financial analysis and non-financial impact, detailed evaluation is done. Once these two studies are passed, we are satisfied. Now implementation is done. Implementation. Implementation and monitoring. Continuous basis monitoring that whether it is being implemented as planned, as forecast or not. And once it is done, post-completion audits. This is done to analyze the mistakes, problems we encountered during the project so that they will not be repeated in the future. So that's the five-step process, capital budgeting process. Now, I hope it is clear. Students, we are moving ahead towards investment appraisal technique. Investment appraisal technique. These investment appraisal techniques, we can classify into two types. One is called non-discounting technique and discounting technique. In our syllabus, first of all is ARR, accounting rate of return, ARR. It is also called rows, basically. Second is simple payback period method. Discounting techniques are three in our syllabus. Discounted payback. net present value and internal rate of return. Note it down, then I'll proceed. So these are the five techniques in our syllabus, which we have to study now. Five investment appraisal techniques. Should I proceed further? Now, next. All right. Now.
students let us start with accounting rate of return ARR so the ARR is the only we have discussed we have named five techniques only technique which is profits based which is profits based remember the only technique now how it is calculated arr it is also called annual percentage return annual or average percentage return so average annual profit divided by average investment cross 100 you may find somewhere initial investment as well remember both formulas are correct with investment or initial both are correct but examiner says this is preferable this is preferable you use average investment unless stated otherwise this is preferable now so accounting rate of return accounting rate of return just see here for example a business is going to start a project where initial investment is 800 million scrap value will be scrap value is the value of the investment at the end 200 million and profits will be as follows profits will be as follows one two, and four that is 200 million 190 million 180 million and uh, 210 million these are the profits profits now average annual profit we need to calculate first of all how to calculate sum of all 200 plus 190 plus 180 plus 210 divided by 4 because 4 years are there we will simply calculate 200 plus 190 plus 180 plus 210 equal divided by 4 195 so here is 195 that is the average annual profit now average investment how to calculate initial investment plus scrap value divided by 2 divided by 2 so 800 plus 200 divided by 2 that is equal to 500 now accounting rate of return average annual profit is here average investment is here cross 100 sorry yes 195 divided by 500 yes 39 percent arr students remember companies decide their boards decide normally that what is the criteria to accept a project 
So they decide a target ARR. So if project ARR is greater than or equal to target ARR, accept project. Or otherwise, if it is less than that, reject it. Accept project. Now, I hope it is clear to you people. So, initial investment is thousand. Scrap value is. 1500 yes and profits are as follows one two three and four and five twenty five hundred twenty thirty seven hundred forty one hundred and four two five the profits students calculate arr and tell me answer be quick everyone calculate arr and tell me answer be quick be quick please Everyone, please. All right. I hope every one of you have done it already. Now, let us proceed further. Let us add some complexity. Investment is 4,500 and scrap value is 300. Cash flows are as follows. One, two, three, four, and five. 1600. Twenty four hundred. Twenty nine hundred. Thirty six hundred and thirty three hundred. These are the cash flows. Cash flows, remember, not profits. We need profit. Student, whatever is the depreciation method, we don't know what. For example, this is a straight line method or they say reducing wellness method, whatever it is. Remember, remember what is the link between cash flow and profit? 
difference? Any one of you know what is difference between profit and cash flow? Anyone out of you? What is difference between profit and cash flow? Anyone out of you? Yes, please. I know this, but what is the difference between the both? I'm not, I'm not asked though definition. Compare both. Link it to both. Arshad, whatever you told, that is correct. But I want to know the link. Remember, remember, when profits are calculated, net profit, Exactly, exactly, exactly. Remember, when profits are calculated, we actually deduct depreciation. We deduct other non-cash expense. And then we get this profit. So add back non-cash expense because they have been deducted while reaching at profit these have been deducted so just add back these items to calculate and you will get cash flow so this is the equation simply add back because they have been deducted add back you will get cash flows is it clear? Is the question clear? Now, next, from this equation, if I say profits is equal to cash flows minus non cash expense same equation profit if we need profits we have cash flows so what we need to do is we need to deduct non cash expense from the cash flow simple is that now come here in this question we have cash flows we need profit we have this we need this what is non cash expense depreciation how does it calculated? Initial value minus scrap value. So difference is depreciation. That is 3200. Depreciation. Non-cash expense. Now, what I will do is, yes, simply cash flows 1600 plus 2400 plus 3600 plus 3300. These are the cash flows. Some minus 3200 non-cash expense that will be total profit for four years five years sorry one is missing 2900 missing 2900 because i missed yes sorry 4200 yes you are right you are right it should be 4200 you are right thank you it should be 4200 yes it should be 4200 exactly exactly my mistake now so total profit for five years we can calculate here yes 1600 
plus 2400 plus 2900 plus 3600 plus 3300 total profit minus 4200 it is 9600 total profit for five years yes for five year profit now average annual profit Ninety six hundred divided by five number of years are five. One nine two zero. Now average investment. That is equal to initial investment. We know that was forty five hundred. Plus 300 scrap value to 2400. So ARR we can calculate now. 1920 divided by 2400 cross 100. So this will be your answer. This will be your answer. I hope it is clear to you people. Yes, students, now it is time for a short break of 10 minutes. We will have 10 minutes break and then we will be back and we will continue. So see you after 10 minutes. Yes.
Yes, please, students. I hope you are there. Are you there? So students, accounting rate of return. We are discussing accounting rate of return. It has some uh, advantages. Yes, it is profit based. So easily understood by a manager. Widely used in industries. Yes. Easy to calculate. Yes. But it has certain drawbacks. What are its drawbacks? What are its drawbacks? Number one, it is profits based and profits are subject to manipulation by change in accounting policies. You change accounting policy, you change estimation, profit will be changed. Yes, profits based. So it is drawback as well. Now, it is based on past, uh, sorry, it is based on, uh, we have discussed it, uh, sorry, it ignores time value of money. So you see, we just simply add profits and divide. We do not consider profit arising after two years. It may not have same value today. We are simply adding up. It ignores time value of money. Now, third, it is a relative term. and ignores the size of project. Now, what is the meaning of it? Now, you see, you see here, project A and project B, it has ARR of 40%, it has ARR of 35%. As per ARR, we should choose A. But if we see the profits, total profits, they are here 20 million, here they are 400 million. So it is ignoring how much quantity we are getting. It says relative term, percentage. It is ignoring this fact in making decision. It says choose this, but only 20 million, small size project. It does not consider it whether it product is small or big. This point is clear to everyone. Now, thank you. Next. Let us proceed further. Let us proceed further. So then the next method of investment appraisal is simple payback. Period method. Simple payback period. So then payback period. What is payback period? 
listen please focus everyone remember when i am going to invest in a project i'm make an i'm going to make an investment my first concern will be that in how much time my initial money which i'm going to invest that will be recovered how much time this will be my first first concern always or there might be a case that for example i am going i know an investment requires 200 million investment today and i am going to arrange this amount from some bank bank is giving me a loan for 4 years means i have to return it in 4 years now if i make investment and i will be concerned whether i will get in 4 year my this initial investment back so that i can return this amount to the bank this is my concern if project is not giving me in 4 year this amount back i cannot move forward with the project now next now so pay back period what is the meaning of this def, this term it is the time period in which initial investment of project is recovered is called payback period of project how much time in how much time project will repay back its investment that is called payback period of the project now next students so companies when they invest when they are going to invest they have a target payback or required payback if a project payback is less than or equal to required payback we say accept project or vice versa we say accept project accept project now next how to calculate payback calculation of payback cash flows of project are even or uneven two cases may be even means cash flow every year for example initial investment is 1600 million and project will be giving annual cash flow of every year 400 million every year it will be giving so what will be the payback very easy to calculate initial investment divided by annual cash flow so initial investment of 1600 divided by 400 is equal to 4 year this is the annual cash flow of the project
Now, I hope it is clear to everyone. Next, if cash flows are uneven, for example, a project has following cash flows, 1400 negative investment, initial investment, 430, 370, 650, 200 now. Now we have to calculate its payback period. So how to calculate? We will make another column, cumulative cash flow column. So 1400, negative. This recovered, 970 negative remaining. Out of 1400, 430 recovered. Now out of 970, 370 recovered, 600. Now, two year, we need 600. This year, 650. It is a part of three year, three will be used to recover 600, not full year three, a part of year three. So you see here, two year complete plus this is what we need 600 divided by 650. You see here, 600 divided by 650. 0.92 so 2.92 years is the payback we can write in the month as well two year plus two year and this is the payback period so 0.92 cross in one year we have 12 months so multiplied by 12 so 11 months two year and 11 months I got 11 months simply 0.92 cross 12 months. So I got 11 months, two year and 11 months. Now, let us proceed further. These are the cash flows zero, one, two, three, four, five, seventeen thousand five hundred, thirty seven hundred, forty nine hundred, sixty two hundred, forty two sixty and 3500 calculate payback be quick everyone be quick everyone calculate payback
Yes, please. Other people as well. All right. So, cumulative cash flow column and seventeen five hundred thirty seven hundred received. Thirteen eight hundred negative, then forty nine hundred received, eighty nine hundred, then sixty two hundred received, seventeen hundred remaining, and so three year and plus seventeen hundred. Divided by four two six zero. Sorry, seventeen hundred divided by four two six zero. Sorry, no, it is twenty seven hundred. I think my calculation is wrong. Eighty nine hundred minus sixty two hundred. Yes, it is twenty seven hundred. Sorry. It is twenty seven hundred. Yes, divided by four two six zero. It is point six three. Six three. Now multiplied by twelve months. Yes. Point six three cross twelve. So eight months around. So three year and eight months. Now, so three or three year and eight months. Yes. Now, run payback period method. Now it's theory. Eight. It is cash flow. Yes, it is screening device for investment appraisal. Screening method. The project which does not meet this criteria, that is screen out. We cannot accept that. We cannot accept that. Yes. Next. Yes. Screening device means that screening device means that the project which not meets criteria, the project. Which does not meet this criteria of payback. For example, we say our payback is in this case three years. So project has this payback. We cannot accept it. Simply screening method means the project which will not meet this criteria of payback. We cannot accept it. Screen out. Screen out means reject. Is it clear? Now, next, next. It helps to yes, students. Uh, how many can you hear me? All of you. How many? 
many of you are uh, having the problem of hearing me? My, my voice is not clear. All is clear. Okay, just one minute, please. Just one minute, please. Do tell me, timely, dear, if there is any problem. Do let me know. Yes, just one minute, please. Just one minute, please. Now tell me, is it better or the same? Okay, okay. All right. So, just a minute, there is a student who is facing problem. Let me resolve the issue of that. Yes. Okay, now, so whenever you face such problem during the class, do let me know in the chat box immediately, okay? Because sometimes it happens that network goes down sometimes. Sometimes. Now, So, students, we are talking about payback. Yes. It helps to minimize risk by encouraging investment in short term projects. In short term projects,
so the people who have missed the explanation or the lecture remember i will provide the video recording of the lecture to you people okay it will be provided it will be provided so don't worry at all about it now now next working you are already part of the video you can note down working yourself no of course notes will be given notes will be provided of course to the student who get enrolled of course working is part of the video you can watch it working means what we are doing here this is what i am writing over here this is what you want what i am writing on the board this is what you want tell me please so this is what this you can note down this lecture while watching the video of course i don't know how to share this i don't know actually otherwise like i can share with you people okay now yes so it helps to minimize risk yes you know by payback we say shorter the payback lesser will be the risk you will accept the project yes now next so what are the drawbacks of the project uh, of this method student the first drawback is that it does not consider time value of money again it ignores it ignores time value of money it does not again we, it is considering cash flow having the same value every year secondly yes it promotes short term is short term is means it encourage excessive investment in short term projects and business may lose long term focus you see business may lose means it you know buy pay back with say shorter the payback accept it accept it so sometime we need to go for the long term projects for the long term perspective so payback ignores that it ignores that and it is a risk attached with it and the third a very important drawback a very important drawback it ignores the cash flows occurring after the payback period now i will explain it you see a project a and b they both require investment of 1000 their cash flows are as follows 300 400 300 150 400 300 and 300 and 350 250 now both has payback of 3 years 
So when you say, okay, what is the payback? This is three years. This three year does not explain what is happening after three years. It ignores. It does not consider full life of project. Full life or all cash flows of project. It ignores. It ignores what is happening after payback period. It ignores that. It ignores that simply. Now, next. Is it clear up till now? Is that clear? Tell me, please. Now, let us proceed further. Let us proceed further, students. Now, the next concept is time value of money. What is time value of money? The value of two days, one dollar is more than tomorrow's one dollar. Why it is more than that? Because of the for yes, this is time value of money. Because of Number one factor, inflation. Tomorrow money will be devalued. Today it has more value. Tomorrow it will be devalued. Yes, tomorrow it will be devalued. Now, next. Second, opportunity for investment. you are getting one dollar today you will invest it you can make it double by tomorrow but tomorrow you will be getting only one dollar on the other hand so opportunity for investment is there if you get today <coughs> and the third is risk or uncertainty it is for sure if you are getting today one dollar it will be in your hand now take it tomorrow or tomorrow tomorrow is uncertain not sure whether you will get tomorrow or not the way you are sure now so these because of these three factors time value of money exists time value of money exists yes now students let us so discounting techniques of investment appraisal. These techniques are those techniques which basically consider or incorporate time value of money. They consider or incorporate time value of money. You see, so discounted payback, NPV, IRR, these are discounting techniques. Now, let us understand discounting, what discounting is actually. Just see here, students. Just see here. For example, you have 100 rupees today. And you want to invest it with the bank for one year. And bank offer you 10% interest. So after one year, how much you will get? 110. 
you know if you solve it one time you invested this today after one year you will get this total amount after one year one ten this is the hundred if we take hundred these are two amounts hundred common out of these two hundred one plus ten percent simple mathematic rule i have taken hundred common out of these two one ten this is the amount you are going to invest today present value this is the rate of return on which you are going to invest this is the amount you will get tomorrow future value if you are going to invest it for one year it's power one for two years power two for n year it's power n now just see here so present value is equal to future value over 1 plus r raised to power n minus n now this is the factor which converts any future amount to the today's value any future value to the today's value so this is called discount factor or present value factor if you want to know the present value of any amount multiply it with the relevant discount factor i hope it is clear so students the next topic is that is discounted payback so I will discuss today discounted payback. That will be our last topic for today. In the next class, I will come. I will be discussing with you annuity and perpetuity. And then I will move, go for NPV in the next class. So now, discounted payback. Discounted payback. It is basically we discuss, you see here, we discuss drawbacks of the payback. And the first drawback that was that it ignores the time value of money. This was the drawback of the payback, simple payback. So the concept of discounted payback came to make up that deficiency in the payback period everything else is the same only one thing is added that is the discounting for example a project has these cash flows now make it 350 Students, calculate its payback, please. Be quick. Tell me its payback period, this project. Be quick, please. Calculate its payback period. Two year and ten months. All right. Two point one zero or two year ten months. What is it? Two year and ten months. All right. All right. Simple payback done. Now I say, for example, let me take it to the Excel sheet here. 
let me take it to the excel sheet for example initial investment is the year 0 1 2 3 and 4 initial investment is negative 1100 all right and here it is Just a minute, please. Yes, I will take it here. It is 400. Yes, 350. Yes, 410. And 350. Once again. So, Students, you have calculated its simple payback two year and and ten months, right? You have calculated simple payback. Payback. All right. You have done it. Now, students, for example, R. Discount rate, discount rate. I say R is equal to 10%. R is equal to 10%, discount factor. So discount factor we will apply. And present value we will calculate. Remember, how to calculate? Equal to this. You see, remember the formula. Future value into one plus r raised to power minus one then it is a present value in this way so just see here i'm going to apply the same once again equal to this multiplied by future value into one plus r point one 10%, R is 10%, raised to power minus this. This is the power. Here it is. Now what I will do, I will simply drag down, automatically discount factor will be calculated and present value will be calculated. Automatically present value will be calculated. I repeat, I repeat once again, equal to future value, future value into one plus R, R is 10%, point one raised to power minus this. Minus n, n is the number of year. Student, this formula is clear to everyone. Tell me, is it clear to everyone? This formula application is that clear? What about others? Very good, very good. So now, so simple, yes. Now simple, drag it down here. Drag it here automatically applied everywhere so present values have been calculated so now we have to make cumulative cash flow column over here or row cumulative cash flow you see here so this here equal to this plus this negative this Equal to this plus this. Now equal to this plus this. Now, now student, you see here three full year. Now we need this, and in the last year is this. So three complete years. So three years plus. Yes. So this is minus sign we will ignore minus sign so just to ignore minus sign 
what i will do minus into yes this divided by this simple so 3.58 years years ignore minus sign or 3 years and how many months so 0.58 yes equal to this multiplied by 12 months seven years three years and seven months so it is done is that clear to everyone so in the discounted payback we first calculate present values of all cash flows in the discounted payback we we first calculate present value of all amounts and then we from those present value we calculate pay, you see cumulative cash flow so this is discounted payback of the project now you see one more thing this is discounted payback this is the simple payback of the same project you calculated this we have established one more fact you can note down with yourself that discounted payback of a project is always more than its simple payback we have proved that we have proved that so sudden one problem is resolved which was the simple payback that that simple payback does not consider time value of money but discounted payback considers that all other advantages and disadvantages of simple payback are valid for this as well only one disadvantage has been removed whether that has become advantage now that it consider time value of money is that clear students yes now students that's the uh, that's it for today students you need to enroll of course before next session so this is the whatsapp number yes you people have kindly contact this number 6644771 triple 3 plus 92 and get enrolled pay your fee and so you will be i will share with you videos all of you i will send the video by tomorrow of this lecture and of course notes will be provided once upon your enrollment okay so that's it for today see you next week goodbye 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 thank you thank you thank you all